Okay, hello everyone. This is an introduction into Capital Land China Trust based off its annual report uh, in 2021. The report should have been released sometime in April 2022. Right? Uh, please note again, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Uh, I may make mistakes, so please don't make any investment decisions based off uh, anything I uh, say in this uh, video. Right? Alright, uh, we'll go straight into what the CEO says. All right, uh, basically they are transforming from a, a China retail S REIT to become uh, a multi-asset China focused REIT. Right, so what this means is they used to just own shopping malls in China. Now they are diversifying into other things like business park and logistic facilities. Right, this is to uh, make their income more uh, diversified and resilient. Right. So in the case of COVID, where a lot of the shopping malls were locked down, right, actually uh, logistics did well. Right. So these are things that should help the REIT survive better in the future. Right. So they changed their name from Capital Land Retail China Trust to Capital Land China Trust uh, sometime in January 2021 all right, uh, to reflect this uh, idea. Okay, so uh, yeah, the five business parks they bought are here, right? So Ascenders uh, Sinsu Portfolio in Suzhou, Ascenders Innovation Towers and Ascenders Innovation Hub in Xi'an, and Singapore Hangzhou Science and Tech Park Phase 1 and 2 in Hangzhou as well, right? So um, yeah, uh, then we have the uh, uh, logistics, right? Logistic parks, uh, Shanghai Fengxian. Logistic Park in Shanghai, uh, Kunshan Bacheng Logistic Park in Kunshan, Wuhan Yangluo Logistic Park in Wuhan, and Chengdu Shuangliu Logistic Park in Chengdu. Right. So, uh, gross revenue going up, except for 2020, obviously is the COVID affecting it. Uh, same with net property income. Again, this doesn't really uh, benefit the shareholders because. Uh, it may be a result of dilution, right? So that means more shares were issued, right? Distributable income again going up, again does not directly benefit shareholders, right? This is more relevant to shareholders, distributable uh, income per unit, right? So uh, this is the amount of uh, uh, money they distributed to the unit holders per share, right? So you can see it's sort of, uh, sort of going up a little bit then coming down here, right? We can maybe ignore 2020 because of COVID, but generally even 2019, there was a slight dip, right? So overall, not great, right? The assets increasing, again, does not directly benefit unit holders. Net asset value per unit, uh, not very good because it's going down, right? So you can see that if you are a unit holder in 2017, you, your, your value of each share will be $1.60. Now it's $1.56 after five years not a great sign right if you look at the share price on 5th september 2022 it's actually one dollar and nine cents which means to say that uh, when you pay one dollar and nine cents you actually get one dollar fifty six cents worth of properties right so if they sell all you, you might make a profit if they liquidate the business you might make a profit maybe a 40 percent profit okay but of course that's very unlikely lah. this is a quite a stable uh, read right it, it's likely to close shop anytime soon right so uh, this is just an update 25th august 2022 i thought there were a couple of interesting things here right you can see the dividend is actually quite high 7.3 right and this is based off analyzed uh first half 2022 dpu of 8.26 cents in singapore cents right and the unit price of one dollar 13 cents right as at, as at 22nd august 2022 right so based off uh, this date, 22nd August 2022, and only first half extrapolated dividends for the year, all right, you actually get 7.3%. The reason why this is much higher than ascendance rates is because, uh, firstly, it's in China, so there's a forex risk, they collect, collect money in renminbi, and they pay out in SGD, right? So if the there's currency fluctuation, the, your dividend is at risk. Uh, secondly, you are subjected to China's uh, COVID lockdowns currently, Okay, and whatever regulations that they may have that may affect the business there, that is out of the uh, risk control, right? 
uh, this is a nice picture of what they're trying to do as mentioned earlier so they were originally in retail now they're trying to build up logistics and uh, business parks okay I'm not quite sure what other, other assets they're trying to bring in okay uh, yeah so they actually uh, apparently acquired their business parks in 2020 and their logistics in 2021 right they are also diversifying, diversifying some malls lah. right uh, financing seems to be uh, decent uh, it seems like they are paying attention to their financing right so yeah that's all for this presentation thank you for listening